Okay, how REST API, so there's a question, how REST API support EDMCS rather than EPM Automate? So EDMCS, there are um, specific uh, REST APIs. So if I go here, I should be seeing REST APIs for EDMCS. Uh, oh no, um, I'm pretty sure I saw. Maybe it's not here, um, but yeah, there there are REST APIs for EDMC. So let me do a quick search. Yeah, so there are REST APIs for EDMCS. Um, I don't know how uh, how many are there, but you can see uh, these are everything that you can do. Um, applications, you can get all applications, files. Um, you can submit jobs, requests, uh, you can view the transaction history, all those things. So those, those are what's available for EDMCS. Uh, this is a question from Raja. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, all right, let me dive into the uh, code and uh, explain this a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, any benefits on running the Python script in Oracle or CI? Um, well, uh, one thing that I can think of is, uh, you know, generally I work with uh, uh, the client and put it on their server. So if they already have OCI and if they want to use that, uh, they can use OCI. Um, I don't know if there's any other benefits. Obviously you can use object storage for um, storing files. Um, you can use the inbuilt OCI F servers like FTP, SFTP servers. Um, I believe if you have an Oracle integration cloud um, offering and if you have um, integrations and processes built, you can use that. Uh, those are the things that I can think of using OCI, but it should work for any uh, work with any server, but object storage is a good thing. Having uh, FTP and SF, FF, SFTP servers in OCI, that's another good thing for file uh, transfers. Um, yeah, I haven't really thought about it, but good question. Okay, so the first cell that you see is um, all the packages and libraries that I'm using uh, in this program. And the way you run this is just, you'll see a Reconnect. Um, you can see that uh, you can you have this play button here. So execute it, and it will execute that cell. So now the second cell is reading the JSON file, and this is the file that I'm using. And what I'm doing is I have my username, password, and URL in there, and I'm reading that uh, file to get the username, password, and um, the login information, uh, the URL. So I run that. Uh, this cell um, is, is all about getting the username, password, and the URL into variables so that we can use it in other um, functions and code that we have. So I'll run that. And this is where we are constructing the REST URL. So if I go into um, planning REST APIs, URL structure, you can see that the URL structure is uh, for planning APIs. Uh, it is Hyperion, sorry. Uh, it is Hyperion planning slash REST and API version and path rate. So this is how you construct the um, URL. And that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm getting the URL from the file and then constructing the uh, endpoint. So this is the endpoint that I have. Let me run this. And you'll see that uh, I have a dictionary. Uh, this is what we call as dictionary. So it has a uh, one item called content type and I'm setting it to application JSON. Uh, so let me go to this specific API and I'll explain what that is. So how do you get, how do you know if it's a get or put, post, delete? So once you go to the documentation, you can see that information here. Specifically, it'll mention here, what is, uh, if it's a get, post, put, delete. You'll also see the uh, application or content type that you have to provide, which is application slash JSON for this one. 
Uh, there are examples on what you get back from the response. So you can see these are the things that you get back from the response. Um, so let me spend some time explaining the structure. Uh, let me copy this. Oh, I could use this copy. All right, I'm gonna put it here um, in, um, so you have a website called JSON Formatter and probably I'll put a link in there. Um, so what it allows you to do is it kind of allows you to visualize in a much better format. Um, so the response that we get back uh, when we invoke the um, when we invoke the get API version uh, is something similar to this. So you'll see that uh, we have key version and the value lifecycle is another key and you have the value. And you'll also see that we have what we call as items. So this is an array and you'll see you have one, two, three, uh, three set of records in that array. And if I expand this, you'll see that version is V1, lifecycle is deprecated and is latest is false. This basically means this is no more valid. Um, and if I go to the next one, you'll see that version V2, is latest is false, lifecycle deprecated. If I go to version V3, I'll show you um, that we have uh, lifecycle is active, is latest is true. This basically means this is the latest version of the API. Uh, why it is important is um, anywhere you go to any other um, uh, job uh, or any other REST API for planning, you have to provide the API version name. And in, in sometimes you have to also provide the application name. So I've seen people hard code this, but there's no need to hard code this. You can get the latest version of the API dynamically and also the application name dynamically using the code. So that's that's what I'm doing here. Um, I hope I ran this. And uh, you can see that it gets the version as API version is V3 and uh, pretty simple. Uh, this is the most important code here. Um, so, what I'm doing is I'm using a library called request and the method is get and providing the URL. So this is the URL uh, that I've constructed and then providing the username and password. So HTTP basic auth means we are using basic authentication. Uh, so what this does is it uh, encodes the username and password when we invoke the REST API. And that's how it has to be sent uh, to the REST API call. So you provide the username, password, it gets encoded while we invoke the REST API. Um, I believe OCI Gen2, it has open authentication OAuth2 available. I've never worked on it so far. Uh, anything, any other, if it's not on OCI Gen2, you have to use basic authentication. That's the only option available right now, if I'm not wrong. Uh, but it's basically username, password, encoded, um, and it sends uh, to the REST API when we invoke it. All right. Uh, so get method, uh, the endpoint, which is the endpoint of the API version call, your username and password. And I'm also mentioning what type of uh, content type it is. So it has to be application slash JSON. Okay, there was one question which is asking, do we need to enable REST API services on Oracle EPM Cloud before we could use it? Uh, no, it is, it is available. Uh, you don't have to do anything. Um, all right, so here, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just checking, once I get the response back, um, I'm checking if the status code is 200, basically that means I'm checking if it is successful or not. And then I'm leading the reading the text. So rec so the response that we get has a text object, um, and I am reading that test object and uh, storing it in a variable. And I'm looping through that uh, list of or the object, and that object is basically this one. So when I get back the data, I get it back like this. And what I'm doing is I'm looping through this uh, items array and you'll see that uh, I've specifically mentioned, I want to loop through the items array. Uh, and you'll see that items array has uh, three, at this point, three records. 
And for each record, I'm checking if it is, is latest. You could also check, um, um, I'm checking for this key, uh, is latest, is false. You could also check lifecycle value. Um, I'm checking if it is, um, is latest. So is latest has uh, two values, right? So let me go here. Uh, it has a true value and it has a false value. So I'm just checking if it is is latest. This means if it is true, then get the version from that uh, record. So if it is false, it's not gonna get it. If it is true, I'll get that value of version and assign it to a variable here, API version. And that is our latest version. So that's the valid API version. So this is a simple example. Um, the other one is get application details. Um, there was, there was a question in polling. I'm not sure what what exactly that is. Yanis, can you explain that a little bit? Oh, you want me to stop the polling? Okay, maybe that is what it is. Okay, get application details is another one that I wanted to show you. Uh, so same thing, right? In here, you need the API version and then you provide the application. This is the endpoint. Um, and this is a get request and the supported media type is application slash JSON. So this basically gets your application uh, name, the type, um, those kind of uh, details. So if I go down, you should be, seeing, yeah, you should get something like this, which is what's the type. Uh, it'll have an app type, um, admin mode, whether it is enabled or not, uh, the name of the app, etc. right? So those are everything that you get in that um, response, right? So I think we ran that. And if I run this, you should see app name is EPBCS. So this is the app name of the application which I've connected to. Again, same thing here. We are constructing the URL. Uh, we're using API version. So we already got the API version here and we are using that API version here. Uh, same concept, we are getting the, uh, we're using the get request method, uh, passing the endpoint, this is endpoint, and the username password, and also the content type. And in here, uh, we're getting the response back into one of the variables and then looping through uh, this items array. Uh, there's only one record in here, but it's still an array because you see this, uh, braces, uh, square brackets here. So that means it's an array. And we loop through that array and get the uh, name from there. So name from the response. Um, why I'm doing this is because I need this in my rest of the uh, REST APIs, all right? Okay, so here, um, so we got the version name, um, Okay, so the question was polling interval to wait for the completed job. Can you please elaborate? Um, you have to, um, okay, let, let me show you an example of uh, submitting a refresh database job and then I'll explain that. All right, uh, this one is add member and you can see it is a post method. Um, sorry, it's a post method. And if I go into the documentation, you see that it is a post method. And this is the endpoint that we have to provide. Um, in here, the API version, uh, we need the API version. We also need the application name. And that's why I've derived that API version and application name uh, so that I don't have to hard code it and then provide the dimension name. You could also have this uh, input from the user, but for this example, I'm gonna be adding a value to the account member. Uh, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is you can add members, but there is limited uh, items available right now uh, that you can use. So you can see you can use name, uh, parent name, uh, description, two-pass calculation. Uh, there are a few, few options available, but it's not a complete list. Um, all right, so uh, same thing. So I'm... I'm getting the endpoint URL or constructing the endpoint URL. So this is the app name that derived from the latest uh, previous code. Then we are uh, constructing this uh, endpoint, which is basically this, right? 
and this is a post and supported media type is application slash JSON. And in here, you'll see a new item called payload. So we have to pass uh, which member name and which parent name, right? This is the simplest of the examples. And I took the example right from here, um, here. Um, but you have to pass the member name as well as the parent name. So where do you want to add the uh, member to which parent should it belong to? Uh, before you do this, you have to make sure that the parent member must be enabled for dynamic children. So go into the properties of that parent member, make sure that dynamic children is enabled. And also, uh, you know, if it's a new parent, you have to make sure that the cube refresh should have happened um, before you invoke this REST API. All right, so I can run this and it should give me a response. Uh, all right, so you can see that it has already added that information. If I log into the instance, I can see uh, this one added, uh, this member has 79120 added to this parent. So this basically gives me back that, you know, it's, it's, it's added there. Um, <laughs> So that's how you add a new member in uh, in EPM. Uh, so this is a good one. So I, I can now submit a refresh database. So in EPM Automate, when you uh, submit a job, um, you will get a response back or it, it actually waits for the job to complete and then we'll give you the data back or details back uh, or error or success message, whatever that is, right? So when you invoke uh, EPM Automate command to import, import job or import metadata or whatever, it actually waits for the process to complete and then gives you the details. It's a bit different in REST API because it's when you submit our job uh, to let's say example of refreshing a database, what it does is it, it, it submits a job, but it doesn't wait for the job to complete. Uh, it submits a job and it'll give you back the response saying that this is the job ID. I've submitted the job and this is the job identifier. Now it's up to you to uh, check the job status. So let me give you this example. So you can see that I've, I've submitted the refresh database job. This is a, again another payload. So I'm uh, invoking the jobs uh, endpoint. I'm giving the job type as cube refresh and job name as refresh database. I'm providing the details here. And you can see this is a post uh, method. So once I submit, uh, you'll see that it gives me a descriptive status of processing, right? It's not complete yet. It's still running the process. And it will give, give you back what we call as job ID. And this is a job identifier for the job that was just submitted. And what you can do is you can use this uh, URL. This is the job identifier, and this is how you, what you can use to get the job details. So what I'm doing here in the next one is I'm taking that information, which is this link, and you can see that I'm taking that link, href, and I'm checking if REL relationship is self, and then I'm checking if that is self, then use this link, this link, and I'm getting the details of that job. It's still processing. You can see that it's still processing. So the question from uh, Yanis was, um, I, that's what I understood. My understanding is you have to wait for this job to complete to go to the next step. Um, not necessary. Like if you are doing something where you added a new member in the application and then you are loading data into the system, uh, so you have to wait for that member to be added and uh, database to be refreshed before you start loading the data. So you have to keep checking this, uh, uh, you know, every, I don't know, 10 seconds or 20 seconds. So you have to keep checking this information. Um, so, yeah, you have to put it this put this in a loop. If it was me, I will put it in a loop and um, you know, do this every uh, twenty seconds. Maybe check the status of the uh, job, and once the job is completed, you can go to the next step. Yeah. So now you can see that you know next time when I run this, it gives me the status that uh, completed with threshold validation. That's not a big deal. 
Um, so you can see best practice validation failures. So these are the details of the job, uh, job name, and you can see that it is completed with threshold violation. So one of the difference if you use REST API and EPM Automate is this, that it's up to you to do the, um, and uh, wait for it and check the status of the job, make sure the job has completed, and then do the rest of the jobs, uh, rest of the processes. In EPM Automate, you issue a command, it actually waits for the job to complete, and then gives you back, um, uh, gives you back the uh, necessary details, whether it was failure or success. Um, all right, so that was, uh, that's one of the differences between EPM Automate and uh, REST APIs. It, it's up to you as a programmer to do the uh, checking. All right, uh, you can do sent mail REST API. I'm just checking the time. Okay, we have 10.40. Um, so you, you can send uh, email using the REST API. Um, so you can see that the content type here uh, changes. Uh, it is not application slash JSON anymore. It is form URL encoded. Um, and you can see that information here. Um, and uh, we use a different API. So if I go here, you can see that we're gonna be using the migration REST API not the planning REST API. So you can, so when you're navigating the uh, EPM documentation, you have to make sure that you're picking the right um, uh, topic. Uh, so here we have planning REST APIs and you have migration REST APIs. So the URL structure for these two are different. And in here you can see that um, we have the endpoint will be interop slash REST and then API version slash path. Uh, so for planning, it is different. Um, it is Hyperion planning slash rest. The migration APIs are interop slash rest. So you have to just keep that in mind that you have to pick the right uh, endpoint URL. Uh, so this is another one that you can use to send email. Uh, I'm not gonna go through that. Um, delete file. Uh, if you have a file, uh, you can go ahead and delete the file. Uh, you just provide the file name um, and uh, the file name is part of your endpoint URL. Then you can use the delete command here to delete the file from the uh, instance. Uh, list files. Um, so if you have a, in a list of files and you want to search for a file, if it's available, so maybe you want to upload a file and before that uh, uploading the file, you want to make sure that that file exists or not, uh, you could do that. Uh, so for that, you would use this uh, command or this function. Uh, so I created a function here um, and let me make sure that it runs. So I'm searching for a file called movements.csv and I can run this function and it should, if the file exists, it's gonna uh, give me back the file name and the size in bytes. So easy to search for files, uh, so these are all of the examples and this is available in that Jupyter Notebooks. Feel free to use it, reuse it. And I've also included a links to the specific REST API and EPM uh, documentation. And as always, if you have questions, you know, please feel to reach out to me. All right, that's all I wanted to cover today uh, from examples. Um, uh, these are all of the useful resources that I have included. Uh, so. Uh, the different methods, uh, versioning related documentation, the different status codes. Uh, you can use Postman and SOAP UI for testing purposes. If you wanna invoke a REST API and see how it works, you can use Postman and SOAP UI. These are all, these both are open source. You can install it and use it for learning purposes. Um, Postman has, also has a neat functionality where you invoke REST API and you can uh, export the code itself. So if you're working with, uh, um, let's say PowerShell or um, Python or JavaScript or whatever that is, you do have the option of invoking the REST API and there's an option to export that into uh, actual programming code. So you can export it into PowerShell, you can export it into Python. Uh, so that way, you know, you have a good starting point. Uh, you can use, download Python, Anaconda, learn more about Jupyter Notebooks and Google Colab. 
Um, okay, so there. Okay, there's a question from Gurpreet asking. Uh, he was unable to log into the instance. So authorization. I hope you have provided uh, the. Uh, let me go back to. So I'm using a JSON file, which has the details of the username, password, and URL. And I hope um, uh, you, are, you have created a file with that information and it has the username, password, and the URL. The username, you don't need to include the identity domain anymore. Earlier we had to use identity domain dot username as the username. Uh, you don't need to do that anymore. Uh, so username is just a username and password is your password. Um, and obviously your URL is, um, is the endpoint URL. And uh, yeah, that should work. Um, okay, so you're saying I hard coded username, password and instant details. Okay, maybe I can spend some time looking at it, but um, I will share this PowerPoint with you guys. So it has all the links to all the useful resources, etc. cetera. Uh, latest, okay. Um, so that way you have all the uh, links and resources. So that was good. Um, can we use latest in place of exact API version? Um, I don't think so. Uh, so you can see that even in Oracle's documentation, they kind of call out that you have to use the version number, the specific version number. I don't think we can use latest. And that was a question from Nick. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, that's all I had to share. Uh, we have, I think, 15 minutes. If you have questions, I'm happy to take those. Yes, I, I will share the recording, whatever I recorded. So basically, I, I forgot to record from the beginning, but uh, at least the code that I showed uh, from the beginning of this, it is recorded. So I will share this with you guys. Uh, okay. You guys don't have any questions. Okay. Um, hey, Gurpreet, uh, I'm okay. If you want to share your screen, I can take a look at Okay, how often Oracle updates available REST APIs? So, I mean, usually it should be monthly. Uh, sometimes there, there are no updates to REST APIs, but uh, at the minimum, uh, you should look for updates every month. Uh, there may be cases, times where there are no updates to REST APIs in a m given month, uh, but EPM updates come every month. Yes, I will share the PPT and also the uh, uh, recording. Is it possible to execute REST API code from business rules? So if you use Groovy uh, business rules, you do have the option of invoking REST APIs from within EPM itself. So if the business rule is a Groovy business rule, uh, then yes, you can invoke the REST APIs from that, uh, not your typical calc script, calc manager, business rules. Um, but it has to be a groovy business rule. Okay. All right, uh, Gurpreet, um, I'm okay if you wanna share your screen, I can take a look at the error that you're getting and uh, I can try to help you. Okay, I'm um, share, I'm stopping my sharing. Okay, there was a question on, this is for EPM REST API, I wanted to check for ERP REST API. Is there a limit to get the number of records from ERP GL? Uh, do we have a REST API for ERP GL? Maybe. Generally what I use is to create a BI publisher report. Um, and that BI publisher report is, you know, uh, I, I don't think there's a limit if you're using a BI publisher report. Uh, so instead of using, I don't know if there's a REST API for GL journals. Maybe there is, I haven't checked. Uh, but if there's a limit, uh, my first initial thought is 
to create a BA publisher report and then invoke that BA publisher report. Um, the output itself will be base 64 encoded. So you use, you decode it and then you can use that data. Oh, how is this able? Let me see. Go read. Hello, uh, Uchinda. So, hello, Rupit, can you try now? Okay. Uh, Uchinda. Okay. Right, okay. I'm going to make you the host so you can share and then make me host once you're done. Try sharing now. We can call it OTBA report using REST. Um, it, it is not exactly REST. Um, it is a web service call, but uh, you can invoke TBA publisher report and uh, OTBA using the web service call. I don't think there is a REST API for BA publisher or um, uh, or, or OTBI. So I would use a web service call. Again, the concepts remains the same. Uh, you just have to create a payload file. Um, I will link uh, to a couple of articles that I wrote about invoke, using web services to invoke uh, BA Publisher and OTBI. So that should help you. All right, uh, basic authentication, okay. Um, hey Aaron, uh, good preacher. How are mm -hmm. you? Okay, so uh, I followed the same steps. Um, okay. I was doing it through the Postman and then I uh, tried doing it manually. One second, I'll just mm -hmm. uh, hide this meeting controls. So I'm able to log into the application. That's not a problem. You okay. can see that I'm already inside the application. Right. But when I'm when I'm doing it through Post API or uh, Postman or through Python, Jupyter mm -hmm. Notebooks, I'm not able to do that. Okay, can you show me the URL up top? Yeah. Okay. And actually, it was. I'm can trying different HTTPS? ways out. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, it is there. Planning test. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh wow. Uh, Hyperion planning slash rest. Huh. And it is a get method, right? I. Yeah. Okay. There is a get method. Okay. HTTPS planning test. PBCS.us. Okay. Period. So that, that's why I was thinking like, do we need to enable the REST um, API service? No, you, you, you don't. Um, you don't. So uh, do one thing. Can you copy that URL and paste it into the browser? Just op open it. Yeah. It, it says it opens up the same. Uh, like a dialog box. Okay, and you give the username. And then password. when I'm trying to. Yeah, um, that is a good good question. So I'll but, try. But if I if I remove this, and try now. Oh, I okay. Get the response. Okay. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> okay, so the slash at the end was causing the issue, I guess. No, but right. again, when I'm trying the same URL in the Postman, right. I'm still getting the same response. Okay. Like, even removing the slash. Okay. okay, let's do one thing. Go back to your uh, Postman. Mm -hmm. One second, I'll just adjust this. This is... Okay. Okay, so Osman says uh, maybe we could try. So for your username, can we try uh, the old way, like giving the identity domain dot, and then? Uh, I see. Yeah. Like this. Yes. Dot and then the username. Yes. Okay. There you go. All right. Got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So that's strange because um, 
I these days I don't um, give, but earlier I know this was a requirement that you had to give. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe it's a difference in terms of, uh, yeah, maybe it's it's because it's OCI Gen One, and that's why got we it, have to uh, use that information. So yeah, Ryan, thank you, um, and Osman too, thank you. So I think um, yeah, if you're an OCI Gen One, it seems like you have to still use uh, uh, the old way of providing the username, which is identity domain dot. Got it. Username. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Cool. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. Good, good. All right. Um, we have eight more minutes. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any questions. So, you know, the idea was to just to show you how easy it is to do this. Um, and, you know, if you're uh, if you're kind of hesitant to use REST APIs and, um, you know, always um, thinking about using EPM Automate, maybe there may be use cases that, you may want to use REST APIs. Um, so I just wanted to give you an idea how easy it is to get started. And using Python is one of the easiest way to get started. Um, the programming language itself is pretty easy to learn. Uh, like I said, open source, a lot of tools and packages available already. Um, so yeah, I do I do a lot of uh, my day-to-day activities using Python. I have automated a lot of stuff using Python. So uh, it's a useful language. Um, and uh, there have been instances where I, when I talk about this, uh, the end users likes Jupyter notebooks. So I have cases where when we load data from a different systems, I've used that to have them analyze data using Jupyter notebooks, even before they upload the data into EPM. Uh, so there have been instances where I have used EP, Jupyter notebooks for the end users oh, as well. So, I have a question here. Yes. Uh, so my question is basically like uh, uh, we, uh, using this Python code, uh, mm-hmm. can we call call it that Python uh, code through a Google Business Suite? Uh, your voice broke. Can, can you say that again? Yeah, my question was like, uh, whatever uh, scriptlets or the code which we wrote in Python. Mm-hmm. So, is it uh, possible that code can be invoked through a Google Business Suite? Uh, the Python code from Groovy? Yeah. Or are you seeing the REST APIs from Groovy? Uh, the Python code from Groovy? I don't think so. Um, and the the charts and uh, the statistics uh, that you showed to us, uh, mm-hmm. is there any possibility to, like, you know, that uh, statistics can be displayed in, in the task list or uh, navigation flow? Oh, <laughs> uh, like we can use the system data and uh, produce some analytics. Um, from EPM, you you're saying? Yeah. From EPM within EPM, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I um, no, I don't think so. Unless you get really creative, and I don't know if you can link to an external URL using task list, if you can link to an external. So my first thought is obviously dashboard, right? You, you create a dashboard and use that. Uh, but if you want to use something of this, um, then if there's an external URL that you can link and you basically host the, uh, the analysis uh, somewhere online, and then you can link to that URL from your dashboard or task list, I don't know. That's the only thing I, but no. If you just want to use this visualization within EPM, I don't think there's an easy way to do that. Okay, okay, thanks. Sir. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, like I said, uh, if you have questions, if you want to learn more, um, I'm happy to help. Um, connect with me on LinkedIn and, uh, you know, um, Cloud Customer Connect Forum. So if you're on Cloud Customer Connect Forum, I think Ryan, I've seen Ryan's post on Cloud Customer Connect Forums. Um, Manoj Sharma, if he's there, I've seen his post and we have connected a couple of times. So um, yeah, um, feel free to ask questions, connect with me and I'll be happy to answer or help you guys in any way. 
Um, I know it's a one and a half hours of your time, so I appreciate you guys spending time with me. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll talk later um, on some other session. And like I said, if you want to be on the podcast, uh, we talk generic uh, topics like ERP, PM, what's coming, what's new, what uh, what we are excited about, those kind of topics. So if you ever want to be on the podcast and uh, hang out with me and Ankur, uh, please feel free to send me a message and uh, uh, we can we can talk on the podcast. Thank you guys and I wish you all a good weekend.